Here at Wheels Through Time, there's over 350 all-American rare motorcycles dating back really to the earliest days of our motorcycle industry. This week on the Drive for History, we're highlighting one-of-a-kind motorcycles, and right here in front of us, one of my favorite machines in the entire museum, uh, the 1916 Harley-Davidson with a sidecar. Now, first thing you guys might notice about this machine, it's not your standard sidecar. Believe it or not, Harley-Davidson in 1916 built this motorcycle to drive from the sidecar. Entirely one of a kind, custom built right at the Harley-Davidson factory. Exactly for who, we're not sure. So I wanna tell you a little bit about the machine uh, and a little bit about the bike's backstory. Now, uh, this motorcycle was founded at an estate auction in Germansville, Pennsylvania in 2006. And it was actually purchased by a good friend of ours uh, from Pennsylvania. And he really didn't know what he was looking at, but he had seen the motorcycle in the auction catalog. Uh, actually, when he got to the auction, noticed a few kind of high roller bidders bidding on this thing. And he decided, you know what, I'm gonna take it home. Now the machine ended up uh, at, at the previous owners. Uh, he was a, uh, excuse me, a snap on a uh, tool dealer, and he actually took this motorcycle in on trade exactly when we don't really know. Uh, now, the neat thing about the machine is it's entirely original, untampered with. It's one of the most complete original machines here at the museum, period, and it's a one-of-a-kind motorcycle. So what you see here, kind of highlighting some of the the uh, the features of the bike. First thing, you've got this big monster double wide sidecar. Now Harley Davidson uh, began producing their own sidecar, I believe, in 1914, and most of the sidecars were kind of narrower, uh, single seater uh, sidecar setups. This was actually touted as your family rig. This double wide sidecar. Uh, many of these were strapped onto standard 1916 Harley Davidsons uh, that you drive from on top of the motorcycle. Uh, again, this machine's been entirely custom built, and there's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. So, starting with the big sidecar, one of the things you see uh, is that there's no seat on the motorcycle right over here. You've actually got double wide seat in the sidecar, and now the kickstart the brake and the clutch are all operated right from inside the sidecar. So this big lever right here uh, is actually your kickstarter, operates some gear mechanism underneath the, the hack here, and then you've actually got a brake pedal and a clutch pedal uh, that allow you to operate the foot controls from inside the car. As you can see, it's got these incredible one-of-a-kind handlebars. I've never seen anything like these early 19th 14, 15, 16 Harley Davidson uh, cast lugs with a special bend arrangement. Uh, and the way that this sidecar is really designed to be ridden, uh, driver sits right here in the seat, uh, kind of hangs his left arm over and operates the spark advance and the decompression throttle here, uh, just like normal. So you've got a hand brake. The bike is absolutely decked out with just about every option and every accessory you could have had at the time. Uh, now this is an electric model, 1916. Uh, second year for the generator they offered. So uh, prior to that, all your lighting and your horn uh, would not be electrically operated. This is an electric headlight, electric tail light, electric horn operated right here with the button on the hand. Um, and it's got an amp gauge here to let you know when your bat or when your generator's charging that battery up. So uh, double toolboxes, one here on the top of the tank, pretty standard for 1916, really even through the early 20s. Uh, and then right where the old seat was, uh, they have actually affixed another toolbox here, uh, luggage rack. And uh, again, the bike is set up with features that no other Harley Davidson is set up with. One of the things you first notice, no floorboard over on this side, never was a floorboard, no brake pedal, um, or excuse me, on this side there'd be no clutch pedal. Now actually where a clutch pedal would be on a standard machine, the rod linkage actually comes up to your accessory clutch lever here. Uh, there's never been a rod attached to this. So the machine, again, is so incredibly original. Uh, this bike's been here at Wheels Through Time for, I think, since 2011. Uh, now, when we got the bike, it sat on three of these dilapidated, uh, hard as a rock, Firestone tires. Uh, but tires have probably been on the motorcycle since new. Uh, definitely weren't holding air. It actually took quite a bit of effort to get uh, these off of the bike. So, 
as, as, it, as it would happen here at the museum, we never really had intention of running this motorcycle. Uh, it really sat kind of as a, a, a preservation piece, as a time capsule uh, with a lot of mystery to the motorcycle. Now, uh, one day my dad just kind of got a wild hair, walked in the museum first thing in the morning and said, today's the day we're gonna put that old 1916 up on tires. So one wheel at a time, uh, we ended up pulling the, the wheels off. I ended up rebuilding the front hub, rebuilding the rear hub, rebuilding the sidecar hub, all while I was mounting tires. Uh, my dad helped me get everything kind of mounted back the way it was. Uh, and that was really kind of the first step and what at the time we thought was the final step uh, kind of in this machine's um, uh, in, in, it, in its past and its future. So as a, the machine was really planned to sit here at Wheels Through Time on display again as a timepiece. Now, everything here at the museum runs, all but maybe three or four motorcycles. Um, this bike, looking at the bike, we could tell that it hadn't been used much, okay? The bike shows virtually no signs of wear. Really the only ding or dent on the bike uh, is on the front of the sidecar here. Probably happened in storage sometime over the years. Uh, I doubt that the bike was was used hard and was used very long. If you look down here underneath the sidecar, there's actually a 1921 New Jersey license plate. Uh, so it's a, a license plate, I assume, that's been on it since the last time the motorcycle was registered. Now, again, the bike showed virtually no signs of wear. Now, being an electric model, the original electric unit kind of, those early Delco Remy generators, uh, uh, they just kind of fall to pieces. The coil, the generator, the distributor, uh, uh, and the, the, the points are all right there in the same uh, housing. So as troublesome as those machines, or as troublesome as those components are, what we did with this bike is we actually pulled off the electric unit that sits right here. Uh, we had a perfectly rebuilt Magneto of, of the very same era. A bike like this would have come with a Bosch, Mag Bosch ZEV Magneto in its day. So we ended up uh, bolting on the Bosch Magneto. We figured that the lighting uh, would be tough as it is, as, as old as all the wiring is, as frayed as it is, uh, probably not smart in, really to run the electrics anyway. So with the, the Magneto, we took care of the ignition. So as it would happen, guys, come on over here and I'll show you kind of what's going on underneath the sidecar. Uh, in order to get to that Magneto, uh, we had to remove the sidecar altogether. Now underneath, you can see this linkage from the Kickstarter. Uh, this is actually the clutch linkage here. It operates the clutch right over on this side. This is your clutch throwout arm. Normally, all of this is operated from the other side of the motorcycle. And what you see, there's springs and cranks here that allow it to happen uh, right there from underneath the sidecar. This big gear over on this side is the Kickstarter, uh, operates on a custom shaft coming off the kicker cover. So um, again, all of that had to be removed. And anytime you're, you're dealing with a one of a kind motorcycle like this, it's a little bit uh, nerve wracking to start taking things apart because you never know exactly how they're going to go back together. Well, Chris and I ended up pulling the sidecar off, uh, which allowed us to expose the cam cover two reasons we wanted to expose the cam cover. First thing, we wanted to get that magneto uh, bolted in. Secondly, we kind of wanted to inspect the cam chest and make sure that everything internally uh, looked up to par before we consider running the bike. So uh, as the sidecar came off, we actually pulled that kicker cover off also, and we actually had the side or the, the motorcycle put up on a rear stand, a standard rear stand. Uh, and then what I did is I actually took a, a stock 1916 Harley Davidson kit cover and bolted it on in place of the custom one that's designed to be operated from inside the sidecar. What that allowed me to do uh, after the magneto was bolted in and we timed the engine, it allowed me to start the motorcycle in its two wheel form uh, and dial it in, make sure that it was taking fuel like it was supposed to, make sure it was starting like it was supposed to. Uh, so after maybe 10 or 15 uh, minutes of, of firing the bike and dialing it in, making sure things were reliable, that's when we got to putting back the, the sidecar back on the machine and hooking up all the lower linkage. And, uh, uh, and the rest is really history. Now, this machine 
Again, it's been here at the museum uh, since 2011, I believe. Uh, we got it in a really interesting and somewhat painful trade. Uh, uh, and at the same time that it was painful, it's one that you'd do again in a heartbeat. Uh, actually traded three 1950s era motorcycles, all in original condition uh, for this bike. And again, there's pan heads out there, stellar motorcycles they were. They'd been in the Wheels Through Time collection for many years, uh, but something like this only comes around once in a lifetime. Uh, so what we did ended up uh, uh, doing the trade and, and got the machine back here. And it's really one of those things that you, before you jump right in, you really kind of, to measure, you really kind of measure the, uh, the opportunity in front of you is it worth it uh, to maybe cause some deterioration on the motorcycle in order to get it running uh, lucky for us we're able to get it running without really having any negative effect on the bike so today I'm gonna crank this thing up for you um, real excited to get it going it runs like a brand new motorcycle from 1916 as you guys can see it's got original gray paint all over it original lighting and lenses there's a Harley bar and shield two places on the sidecar one here on the door uh, one way up front here and this one's as clear as day the paint on the gas tank is like none other it's just as remarkable as it gets so that gray uh, just really really pops and for something to be 104 years old and to be as in as good a condition as this thing is is just really really remarkable now some of the other odd features on this bike and what I'm gonna do is climb in here and uh, get get uh, seated now inside the sidecar guys um, double seater so there are uh, purse one person operates here on the left side of the sidecar maybe this side here you can see possibly for a child um, traditionally the floor mat is way up front in the front of the sidecar you can stretch your legs out this one's set really far back don't know if it was built for a particularly short person don't know if it was built uh for a child as a passenger or possibly even uh to store something up in the front of the sidecar so we've heard uh, a few rumors our friend bill at harley davidson actually thought that the machine might be a mail carrier uh set up again ride the motorcycle slide the mail in the mailbox it's actually set up with a trailer hitch on the back um so there's really no telling what this was used for. Now, in 1916, we know that they built at least two of these. Uh, one, this one is not documented. It exists today, but there's no old photos that we know of of this machine. Now, the other 1916 Harley Davidson with the sidecar, we actually have kind of well documented. There's photos of it throughout 1916 Harley Davidson enthusiasts. It was actually built for a guy with one arm and no legs. And uh, in 1916, uh, he hopped aboard the custom uh, Harley Davidson sidecar rig that you drive from the sidecar and with one arm, no legs, uh, went from Los Angeles uh, uh, to Washington DC, I believe, coast to coast and back. Actually stopped at the Dodge City 300 in the middle of the summer uh, and saw the, the Harley Davidson crew racking up honors at, uh, at the Dodge City race. So inside the sidecar guys, again, all custom stuff in here. You've got your clutch pedal, your brake pedal. The brake pedal is kind of designed to be operated at the same time as the clutch pedal. Um, so uh, again, anytime you're slowing down on this, there's no hand clutch per se. Uh, you're using it all with your foot there. So the kick starter right up here. So it's kind of a troublesome setup to kick. And every time we have kicked it, you always gotta be really cognizant of this old leather on the seat. We're doing our best to preserve this motorcycle uh, to as much as we can and show as little wear as we can. Uh, so starting, it's always a little bit tedious. Now, one of the neat features of this sidecar is it's actually got two doors. It's the only sidecar we've ever seen with two doors uh, and obviously you're not getting out the other door what we believe the other door was uh, designed for was so that you could access the engine components now initially you had your your switch box right here so your switches would be right here to, on your left hand carburetor on a, a J model on a, any motorcycle this era really from you know, your earliest twins 1911 12 13 uh, all the way up through 
uh, the flathead era, the carb went out the left side. This is the only one uh, that we've seen that's factory built for the street with the carb coming out that right side. And again, that's so that the person in the sidecar can operate the clutch, or excuse me, operate the choke, operate the air bleed, uh, tickle the carburetor, check throttle linkage, make adjustments when he needs to. So uh, we're gonna get this thing fired up. Hopefully it'll just take a couple kicks, uh, kind of an odd kick, uh, uh, uh kicker mechanism but we're gonna see how she goes so the fuel is on over on the other side yep choke and fingers crossed that this thing will just take a, a couple kicks all right Pop right off. There we go. Ha! Now listen to how quiet this motor is, Steve. Back that spark off just a little bit, bring the idle down. The motor makes virtually no valve noise, no push rod noise. It's just an incredibly well-preserved machine and uh, we're gonna take it for a spin. for history here at wheels through time guys highlighting one of a kind motorcycles it doesn't get any neater than this 1916 harley davidson that you drive from the sidecar if you guys are enjoying what you see check out driveforhistory.com you guys help fuel us the museum that runs make a contribution today check out our raffle check out our lifetime membership and make sure you come visit the museum soon we'll see you again